Have you ever found yourself watching your favorite artists on YouTube pull off impossible challenges, create amazing paintings, or explore new things, and just thought to yourself, I, I wish I could do that. that. Yeah, I've been there, watching other people live my artistic dreams through their videos. And for some reason, I just keep watching and watching instead of practicing or learning the things that I wanted to learn. But today, it's time to break that pattern. So join me as I finally learn how to draw the figure for the next 100 hours. And I know what you might be thinking. But Claudia, why go from zero to 100? In this economy... Shh, hey, look at me. Look, hey, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fine. And I'm on a mission, folks. The anatomy mission. Here's the plan. Step one, follow Andrew Loomis's book to learn basic anatomy and refresh my knowledge. Step two, practice gesture drawing to learn how to draw quickly and loosen up. And finally, step three, use all of my knowledge to draw figures from my imagination. Vámonos, muchachos! All right, buckle up, because in this step, I have this gem on my hands. Figure drawing for all it's worth by the one and only Andrew Loomis. Why Andrew Loomis? Well, for me, he's like the art superhero of teaching. My main goal is to copy these exercises exactly to make sure that I understand the basics. This is going pretty well, honestly. I've only been drawing mannequins so far, which are looking a little bit stiff and odd. But as a starting point, I think this is great. Okay, the first seven days doing this challenge are over. Let's see if I made any progress. Here's where I started, and here's where we are. As for now, I can see a crazy level of improvement, and it's only been seven days of practicing as much as I can per day. The biggest improvement I see so far is how much less stiff my drawings look. I feel like the muscle memory is starting to kick in, and I feel more comfortable drawing full figures. This was the first time I've drawn from my imagination, and I mean, they look okay, stiff, but it's a good start. There was also a short introduction to foreshortening. Foreshortening happens when a part of the body or object seems shorter than it actually is because of the angle in relation to the viewer, so this for example. This is a tricky aspect of figure drawing because you need to create the illusion of depth and perspective on a flat surface. So I was pretty surprised that the book went into it this early, but I found the explanation to be very helpful. Alright, I'm excited, let's continue. Now you might notice that during this whole challenge I won't be really focusing on drawing the hands, the feet or the faces. That's because my main focus is learning how to draw the figure. This is challenging enough already without adding the additional difficulty of drawing hands, feet and faces. I feel like I'm drawing so much faster now. My drawings don't feel stiff at all and these are definitely the best figure drawings that I have ever made in my life. I am so thankful that I decided to give myself this challenge. 
I'm happy with my progress so far, but I need to keep reminding myself that this is a skill that takes a lot of time to fully master. And going through this journey is totally worth it. From time to time, I have a few off drawings, but another thing I've learned from this book is that every artist will do good drawings and bad drawings. It's up to us to analyze what feels off and what can be improved. Usually all it takes is going back to the basics. Really understanding the basics is key to feeling confident about your art and your progress. I feel like through this process, I'm rediscovering the power of practice. And there's something you don't know about me. My parents have had a karate school for over 40 years. So basically, I was born into a karate school. It is quite literally my childhood home. So I've been practicing since I was two years old and even got to win world championships and many other big events. Karate is a huge part of who I am. And one of the many life lessons karate taught me is that having some talent is a good starting point. But talent is nothing without practice. Like the constant current of the river polishes the stone, consistent practice turns raw talent into incredible skill. At this point, I'm doing two minute gesture drawings because the book told me to do so. <laughs> and as you can see, I had to give them a few tries. <laughs> I realized that learning anatomy is one thing, but gesture drawing is a whole different ball game. With gesture drawing, you don't have time to think. It's like you're racing against the clock. And the first few times I panicked <laughs> and the drawings didn't turn out that good. But then I tried to calm my mind and let my new anatomy knowledge guide me. With each try, drawings got better and better. It was almost as if I had to feel more than think, which is completely different from how I've always drawn. As for drawings with a reference, I feel like I've reached a whole new level. I just feel I'm getting better and better the more I practice. And even if I make a sucky drawing, it doesn't bother me that much. I just try again, and the second attempt is usually way better. But this definitely wasn't the case for me at all before. Like many artists, fear of failure is a big problem that I struggle with. And I think that's why I haven't really made figure drawings before, because I always felt like I would fail, and so I wouldn't even want to try. <laughs> But through this challenge, I've learned to be proud of my mistakes because one bad drawing doesn't define my skills, my progress, or my worth as an artist. Sure, sometimes you need more than one extra try, <laughs> and that's okay. Every day is different, and some days we're just a bit off, but it's crucial to show up even on those days. And on I went to finish the longest step of any plan I have ever made. <laughs> finish every exercise in this book, whoa. <laughs> it took me so much longer than I thought, but that's okay. I feel like this book is an amazing read filled with encouragement and so much knowledge from a true master of the craft. Plus, the exercises are incredibly helpful. And I was finally done with all the exercises concerning figure drawing in this book. There are still a few cool exercises, but I really wanted to keep this challenge all about the figure, so I'll do those on my own time outside of this challenge. And so, with all the exercises about figure drawing in the book done, it is time to move to step two, gesture drawing. The point now is for me to loosen up and draw figures quickly, making sure that I capture the essence and the energy of the reference. For this, I'm going to warm up using the wooden mannequin and make quick five minute sketches of it. I noticed I kept making the figure a bit long and wonky, but that's okay for now. I'm just trying to draw faster. Alright, I'm all warmed up. And now, that was easy mode. Let's turn up the difficulty and try to draw gestures in two minutes. For this part, I'll use a website called Line of Action. This is an incredible tool for artists because you can choose what type of reference image you want, if you want animals, figure drawing, whatever you want. You can also choose for how long you want the image to stay and the site just spits out the references for you. So you can just focus on your practice. I'm feeling much more comfortable with gesture drawing at this point. I'm focusing on the rhythm and the balance of the figures. Not gonna lie, I did need a little bit longer than two minutes for a few of these sketches. But I tried my best to do as many as I could using only two minutes, 
This is such an amazing exercise because gesture drawing will help you improve your observation skills by encouraging you to quickly analyze and interpret the basic shapes, proportions and movements of a subject. The whole point is to draw quickly and this space encourages you to draw from your instincts, helping you avoid overthinking and allowing you to have a more intuitive approach to drawing. If you continue to practice gesture drawing consistently, it helps you train your memory, your observational skills, and these will be crucial when you want to draw from imagination. Mm, wow, that's a pretty big butt. Here are all the drawings I managed to do with the time I had. Okay, this means we're at the last stop, the final puzzle piece, or as I see it, the boss battle. Prepare to enter. Step three, drawing figures from my imagination. For some people, this is super easy to do, but I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I've never been able to draw a figure without having any references. So I'm excited to see how I'll do. I'm nervous, but less thinking and more doing. <laughs> Now, drawing people is pretty tricky, and it gets even trickier when you don't have a reference to look at. This challenge needs a lot of creativity and imagination because you're not copying what you see, but making up something completely new. That being said, I can't believe how much more confident I feel drawing this from my mind. I'm really trying to imagine myself doing the poses I want to draw and use that image in my mind as my reference. It's very demanding. This is far past anything I've ever been able to draw from my mind. Plus, I feel confident while drawing. Of course, I feel like these drawings aren't exactly at the same level as some of the ones I did with the reference, but they're not far off. Like any skill, drawing from imagination has a learning curve, and it takes time to really get good at expressing your ideas without needing to use a reference. But I figured out that it's better to start with a plan for what you want your character to be doing. You could even stand up for a moment and stare at yourself in the mirror posing. Notice the lines, curves, the way your muscles are behaving during that pose. Stare at the mirror. So when you sit back at your desk, you have a plan, an idea to follow. These drawings got me feeling really powerful. And you can see it by the characters I decided to draw. Let me tell you something. You think 100 hours, and sure, it sounds like a lot of time. But whoa, it's a lot of time. <laughs> but check this out. We went from this stiff drawings to this really cool and powerful ones. I've learned so much during this challenge, and I feel like I've improved my skills like never before. Now that I'm done with this challenge, my main takeaways are one. Studying the mannequin and understanding the simplified version of a figure will help you get the proportions ingrained in your brain and in your muscle memory. Two, if you spend even one minute learning the basics of anatomy, that will be one minute well spent. Learning the necessary principles of anatomy is a very quick process, much quicker than you might think. And when you realize it takes so little effort, why not use that time to understand something that will always be helpful for you? Three, not all your drawings will be good drawings, because we can all be off at any time. What's important is taking the time to figure out why the drawing didn't work and giving it another shot, concentrating on getting better each time. And finally, this challenge helped me build a daily habit of drawing, even when I didn't feel like it. I got a game-changing quote to share with you today. Routine knowledge and learning to express yourself individually become the basis for what is often referred to as inspiration. The truth is that there are no hard and fast rules. The best advice is to watch for that individual spark and fan it into flame when you find it. And if you've been feeling a little bit blocked lately or like you can't draw anything, 
In this video, I share with you my best tips to break free from that art block and get back into your drawing practice.